why elements? First of all, every single thing in the universe is made from them. So we thought it was only a certain amount of time that we could ignore them in the science gallery. I suppose it's really important to, to remember that the elements don't just belong to the scientists. They, really, they belong to all of us and in, in a way they are uh, something which is part of all of human culture. I am happy to be with you at this occasion uh, for the celebration of the year of chemistry which is something so important. The reason for this uh, wonderful exhibition is because we have a tercentenary this year. The exhibition elements is intended as a celebration of all that's most basic about uh, chemistry. I think the most exciting part of presenting chemistry in an exhibition with an artistic flavour to it is to get people to look at science in a different way. And the second most exciting part, of course, is to get members of the public and especially younger members of the public to come in and actually handle the elements and play with them and have experiences with them which will hopefully bring home to them that chemistry is not the big bad wolf that everybody thinks it is. So the Atomic Kitchen we kind of have four stations in the Atomic Kitchen. We have a lot of different reactive recipes that you can take part in and um, so create your own crystal garden, you can bubble up some hydrogen gas, you can get to make your own precious metals. So in this room we have portraits of the elements and we have 15 different elements represented in this room. So these are all artistic representations of the different elements. We have a silicone wafer here that's representing silicone. We have copper, we've got gold, we have platinum, we have mercury. As well we have a, a neon sign that's actually made from argon. It's really good, everything I've seen so far. The, um, the hands-on, being able to you know, touch all the different elements they have on display is, is pretty cool. The diamond ring made from a, from a, a, a dead person is, is really, really cool. I also like the alternative periodic tables they have downstairs. So, of course, Dimitri Mendeleev's classical periodic table, which we have represented here behind us, isn't the only way to represent the periodic table and the structures and patterns of the chemical elements. Um, you can do it musically, as with our piece, but you can also arrange it into different graphical forms. So it can be represented in, as a three-dimensional object or as a galaxy. The same patterns can be represented in so many different ways. Right behind me is the world's first crowdsourced periodic table. This is our bring your own elements section. And what we're asking people to do is bring along different objects from their home, from their shed, and they have to insert it into the correct box. Just to run in conjunction with the element show, we decided it would be a nice idea to ask a group of about 30, 35 creatives to assign them each their own element and see uh, how they interpret it themselves and we left the brief very open. The artwork, the graphic artwork downstairs is, is, is quite uh, enlightening and makes you think about the, the subject in a whole new way. Definitely in a different way than I thought about when I was in chemistry class in high school. So, you know, that's enough for me. To take part in the elements of life, we just want you to come along, you stand up on the scales, uh, pop in a couple of your details and you'll get a printout then of your weight telling you the percentage of each element and the mass of each element that makes up your body. I like the weighing machine thing because it made me feel skinnier than him. Um. That's me. <laughs> very nice and the best thing I like is this thing, this little guy behind me. Yeah, it's kind of the best science I've ever seen, like much, much, much better than school science. <laughs>